Hello Internet, Adopted Mike here, and today I'm going to take a look at this MSI motherboard. This is an Intel motherboard with the B360 chipset, and this is MSI's B360M for Micro ATX, and it's their Bazooka branding. So we'll take a look at the box real quick. On the back it's got uh, the specifications that we'll go over when we take a look at the board. And anyway, let's go ahead and get the uh, accessories out and we'll start going over those. Okay, for starters, we've got a rear I.O. shield that is colored nicely, so not the standard uh, silver. Uh, however, it's not padded on the back end, so it's just, uh, you know, colored on the back side and labeled nicely. We've got uh, SATA 6 cables, um, or rather SATA 3 6 gigabit a second cables. There are two, one straight on and then one straight to right angle. We've got an M.2 screw. It comes with a case badge here. We've got a quick install guide, a driver disc, although it's always good to download the newest drivers off the website. We've got a product registration card, and we've got the manual. And now let's take a look at the motherboard itself. Okay, here is the board now out of the bag. Uh, we're going to start off here. We've got our CPU um, socket there for the 8th gen Intel processors, as well as a 8-pin power connector for the CPU. We've got a decent heat spreader over the um, VRMs for the CPU. Uh, it's not bad. Definitely, probably more cosmetic, but it will do a decent job at dissipating heat. Definitely better than nothing over the uh, VRM. We've got a PCI Express 3.0. There's a by 16 and two by ones, all 3.0. We've got our four RAM slots there, a 24 pin power for the motherboard. We've got some fan headers also too. There's a CPU fan header here, that's four pin, and then another four pin and a four pin there. So two more four pins for system fans to round out the uh, fan headers. We've got a total of six SATA ports. There are two right here uh, angled out, and then we have one, two, three, four more pointing up for our SATA connectivity. So our front panel connectors are down here to the bottom right. We've got a speaker connector here for an optional speaker. There is not one on the motherboard. We've got USB 2.0. There's two of those right here as well as the 3.0 uh, front panel connector there. There is a parallel port uh, here should you need that. We've got a serial port down here and our uh, front panel audio down here at the very bottom and then there is an LED fan header or not fan header, LED control header here for the motherboard to control um, LED lights and we have our M.2 uh, whether it be PCI Express, it supports PCI Express or SATA on uh, this M.2 slot right there. And that kind of rounds it out. Now let's get into a little more of the specifics on some of the, um, uh, on some of the things like RAM and that. Okay, as mentioned before, we've got our CPU socket here for the 8th gen Intel processors and then our four DDR4 RAM slots here. So this will support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So four 16 gigabyte sticks and it'll support DDR4 2666 in dual channel mode. Uh, this will be non-ECC memory and obviously XMP profiles will work with this as well too. Now when we move down to the SATA ports, here we've got the six SATA ports. The B chipset uh, or the B360 chipset does not support RAID out of these. So these are going to be software RAID compatible but not hardware RAID compatible. And then one other thing to think about when it comes to SATA, if you use the M.2 drive as a SATA drive, you will lose uh, one of the SATA ports. You'll lose SATA port number one uh, when using this as a SATA uh, device. Not so much much, not when you use it as a PCI Express device, but for SATA, so keep that in mind. Uh, it'll max, this board will max at six SATA devices without adding um, another uh, you know, SATA supported card. And then another thing to mention too is this will support the uh, Intel Optane, so it's Optane ready in this M.2, and it can be uh, this screw can be moved to select different sizes of M.2 drives for the uh, PCI Express or SATA M.2. Taking a look at the rear I/O, we have a PS2 port, uh, both for keyboard and mouse. 
uh, if your CPU has integrated graphics, uh, then you would be able to use DVI out, which is digital only, so you could not get VGA with the converter, or HDMI out. Keep in mind again, like an F-series SKU, Intel would not have onboard graphics, so you wouldn't be able to use those ports. These would only be active if you had integrated graphics. Uh, a little confusing with that, but just keep in mind, yeah, F-series F SKUs from Intel don't have integrated graphics, so those ports will be disabled and you will need a video card. We've got USB 2.0 right up here. There's two of those. We've got a Realtek Gigabit NIC. Then we have a USB 3.0. This would be Gen 1, so 5 gigabits a second. There's 1, 2, 3 Type A, 1 Type C, and then we have our Realtek Audio Solution on board as well, too. Uh, with uh, in and out there. So to wrap up the features of this motherboard, there's a few things that I do want to mention. Being this is a B chipset and not a Z, do not, uh, well, I wouldn't recommend pairing a K series SKU with this because you would not be able to overclock, so definitely keep that in mind. This is going to be more for a non K. I probably wouldn't go any higher than like an i5 with this, but it would be perfect with the Pentium, uh, I guess it'd be Pentium Gold and the Celeron processors, and it would be great with i3 and i5 um, Intel processors, just as long as you keep in mind that yes, you can't overclock it, so it'd be kind of wasting money for. K SKU uh, in this particular board and then also thinking about that in more in a budget oriented thing you may want to use integrated graphics so also watch out for the F SKUs just to make sure uh, if you need integrated graphics um, but if not we've got a full PCI Express 16 lanes a 3.0 right there so it would be great for just about any graphics card on the market and then like a, a, a nice i5 in there would make a uh, great budget gaming system although this would also work very well for just a uh, just an office type system because this board is relatively inexpensive. It doesn't have all the features uh, of higher end um, Z series motherboards, but you have enough here. You've got a graphics card slot if you need it. You've got M.2 if you want high speed storage. You can put tons of RAM in here, so it's definitely uh, not a bad board, um, even though it is missing some of the key features from Intel. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments comments below um, and then I will do my best to answer them and as always thank you for watching